the next topic that we have is of course the only part of your certification is how to generate the ssh keys but i am taking it one step forward to explain you about what is oracle cloud what all things you can do in oracle cloud and what you can't do in oracle cloud of course and the other overview of the entire oracle cloud <clears throat> now before i jump into oracle cloud let's uh, look at an overview and then we'll come back to it <clears throat> so guys in this one <clears throat> like in oracle cloud uh, like you already know, there is a cloud war that is going on between AWS, uh, Microsoft, uh, Azure, and then Google Cloud is also coming in picture. And then we also have uh, Oracle Cloud. Again, there are, uh, this is layer one, the top and the niche layer that is fighting in the uh, top level of course there are other cloud service vendors like salesforce and there are other one more which is emerging i'm not getting the name but it's in my mind and also in the second layer we also have the ibm uh, bloom blue max or uh, earlier it was known as ibm soft layer and uh, right now they have renamed it to ibm blue max <clears throat> So the question is, guys, first of all, it all starts with why cloud and uh, the beauty about cloud is, see, let's say you start a business and you purchase a uh, hardware, okay, 3 GB RAM <clears throat> and you have one TB hard disk. All right. Now your business is growing. You need a bigger server and then you purchased another server that is like maybe of a bigger size maybe 128 gb ram and and then you have maybe 10 terabytes of hard disk now this upscale upscaling of the uh, uh, upgrading of the hardware the biggest problem is your old hardware becomes non-usable or it tends to become problematic to you because because either you need to resell it or you just throw it into garbage. Now, this is one of the reasons that's causing a lot of e-waste in the world, all right? Because of the emerging technologies, emerging machines, <clears throat> the old hardwares are becoming non-usable or non-functional. And when you try to resell it, you get peanuts. And that's why <clears throat> this is one very simple problem, all right? Again, if you have it in your home, let's take you host this uh, database in your or, or this server at your house then the biggest problem is network how do you make people from the other side of the globe connect to this server because you need a high bandwidth and for the high bandwidth you need to contact your internet service provider then internet service provider might or might not have that kind of bandwidth in your area and of course if you all know uh, I mean, if you are a fan of a little bit of uh, networking, then you know that the internet service providers that give internet at your home, they use something called as uh, dynamic IP. All right. So because of these dynamic IPs, what happens is let's take your internet connection was lost and it was connected again. There was some issue at the ISP N the IP address that you had earlier, 192.168.0.12, I'm taking some IP address. This will not be same if uh, some issue happened at the ISP and they had to uh, bounce the router or some other issue. So what happens is the IP address will change 192.168.12.12. In this case, if the server is at your home, the problem is now you need to share this new IP address with your customers or with the application team and whatnot. Now these causes a little bit of problems. And this is a real world case with small scale businesses. Uh, in They have increasing needs of the hardware and they also have increasing needs on the application connectivity. Now this is why what happens is we rent servers. I think that is the best name for cloud. I don't know if 
that is the right term but ultimately what you're doing is you're trying to rent servers now they have come up with fancy names uh, something called as a platform as a service then they have database as a service then they have software as a service of course we i mean technically i can 100 percent define the difference between all of them but that's not the goal right now what we are trying to understand is you as a cloud user any company that is using the cloud you are renting few things from the cloud vendor at at the core okay i'm not talking about the fancy jargons at the core what you are doing is you are renting uh, servers you are renting network because you need a networking between the servers that you hire in the cloud right so you are also renting the network and definitely when you are renting the network you are also renting the ip addresses because you need an ip address to connect to your server and whenever you have a server technically you are at also renting the storage because uh, you need storage right in order to store the server data and and the list might go on but on primary level at the core of the cloud these are the stuff that you rent and then you kind of build your own virtual private cloud again guys there are a lot of fancy names and each fancy name can be defined when we are into a specific cloud level training but at core these are the stuff that are rented by anyone in cloud all right now that being said in oracle cloud now of course we can't look at aws microsoft azure google but we will definitely look at oracle cloud as per my experience guys i have worked on aws cloud i have worked on google cloud i have worked on ibm software i have worked on oracle cloud but i am yet to look at microsoft azure because this is something i haven't had a chance to work on maybe i never got a client who was into microsoft azure <clears throat> but all other uh, cloud definitely i have worked on my worst experience was with aws uh, i don't know why i i don't like aws uh, recently i have moved or we have moved completely into the oracle cloud 